I'm John Batchelor. This is the John Batchelor Show. Mary Kissel, the editorial board of the Wall Street Journal and Opinion Journal, the host each day at 1 p.m. Australia, that's East Coast time, for WSJ.com is here. And we're going to be very, very pleased to speak to Eli Lake. Eli, with his colleague Josh Rogan at the Daily Beast, have a story up that is both a fascination of the 21st century and compelling in this long-standing drama of Al-Qaeda. What is Al-Qaeda? What are their ambitions? Is it on the road or path to defeat? Or is it revived? Is it awakened? The threats, you've all heard them in the news these last weeks to our embassies, the closing of the embassies, the president saying don't get, or don't overreact. All of that points to not just this beast Al-Qaeda who can spell it, but also to a series of people whose, whose pictures passed up, pop up, just like passport pictures, and then you go, who's that guy? Why is he wearing a funny hat and a beard? Why do I have to remember him? That's the leadership. That's the wiring di- diagram. You know the corporation by its leadership. That's all you can buy. So the leadership of Al-Qaeda are involved in this report. I'm going to be very cautious here. Eli, a very good evening to you. The headline in your startling piece with your colleague Josh. Al-Qaeda conference call intercepted by U.S. officials sparked alerts. Uh, Please interpret what we can say about intercepted conference call. Does that mean that Zawahiri uh, sat there or was in some way communicating with other leaders, lieutenants, and they're saying, oh, let's scare the United States (laughs) and have another threat to their embassies on the anniversary of 9-11? Good evening to you, Eli. Good evening to you. Uh, Thanks for having me on. It's an important time. Um, I think here's how I would say it. This was like a virtual board meeting where you can conduct such a thing with lots of people in different locations on a line, as I reported, that uh, al-Qaeda's top leadership and representatives or actual leaders themselves of al-Qaeda's many affiliates uh, were able to communicate in a kind of real-time board meeting. And that's how I would describe it. And I really can't get much further into um, how they did it, and uh, there are a lot of details. There are details that I... Um, withholding along with Josh Rogan. But I think the important point is that the notion that Zawahiri or other senior al-Qaeda leaders are on the run from American drone strikes and are incapable of managing a global operation uh, has been seriously decimated. And this is something that uh, I think the Obama administration sort of led us to believe that the tide of war in a lot of ways was ending. And that they, the idea of AQSL, al-Qaeda senior leadership, was on the run, largely decimated, and they were now dealing with these affiliates. To be fair, Obama's been waging a very secret war in Yemen almost, you know, since the beginning of his presidency, or at least since the Christmas Day bomber, uh, Abdul Farouk, in 2009. So uh, he is aware of this, and he's aware of these affiliated threats, but it's the coordination, and it's also the fact that on this particular board meeting, uh, there was the initial announcement that Nasser al wuhaishi who is the leader of al-Qaeda's Yemen affiliate, was being promoted to the general manager for a kind of new phase of this operation where there would be this attack, which would give him basically some sort of operational control. I wouldn't say operational control. He was access to the resources now of al-Qaeda's many affiliates. And that's an important uh, fact as well. And this is a fairly wily survivor, this Wuhaishi guy, and has, all, has proved to be a tough target for the CIA and uh, JSOC, because he's avoided, uh, he's managed to avoid uh, avoid them for now. Eli, I had very conflicting reactions to your story. On the one hand, I felt heartened that the CIA had the wherewithal and the capability to track this conversation. And then on the other hand, as you just outlined, I felt very worried about the fact that they were even having this conversation and that they were still out there. How do you read this? Are you uh, more heartened than you are discouraged or the other way around? Well, I try to look at it just more from the perspective of what are their capabilities. I mean, one thing that we always have to consider is that it's been a long time since 9-11 and the United States and allied countries have gotten very good at uh, border security and customs and uh, other sorts of things. We've had a lot of wins in the war on terror in the sense that there's a tremendous amount of intelligence that was gleaned from the Abbottabad compound. 
Um, and so I don't want to, I mean, I, I, but I think that it also shows that Al-Qaeda has been able to adapt. And that's an important distinction because I think that there are a lot of people who are kind of in the expert community that, um, you know, are very much attached to the idea that the various affiliates have different agendas. They don't all necessarily coordinate. And I think that there are complicated political relationships there, like any organization, but it remains an organization. And the boss just promoted the head of the Yemen affiliate to oversee what appears to be an operational phase, at least according to not only the reaction, but that's what, uh, that's what sources are telling me. Boko Haram of Nigeria, the Pakistani Taliban, of course. Al-Qaeda in, the, in Iraq, yes. Al-Qaeda in the Islamic Maghreb, of course. But suddenly I circle this surprise. Al-Qaeda in the Sinai. Well, Eli, well, 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 here we go. Al-Qaeda in the Sinai, is that something you've seen come up before? All of a sudden, they've got a base in that rogue state. Well, I've written uh, quite a few stories about Al-Qaeda in the Sinai. Uh, much like many Al-Qaeda's, including Al-Qaeda's Yemen affiliate, it starts in some ways with the release of individuals from prison. Mm -hmm. And uh, what we saw in the Egyptian Revolution, the highlight of the Arab Spring, was a number of prison prisoners were released. And they were considered in some ways political prisoners, but they were Salafists and members of Gamal Islamiyah and Egyptian Islamic Jihad. These are the organizations that killed Anwar Sadat. And they also are organizations that are connected to Ayman al-Zawahiri, who is the new leader of al-Qaeda. The Egyptian al-Zawahiri, yes. Mohammed al-Zawahiri, who appeared to be one of the spokesmen, at least for the protesters, uh, last night on 9-11, 2012, the morning the of the Benghazi of the attack. Yes, we so, go around in circles. Eli, we'll, we'll stop there. We've been very cautious, very cautious, and I don't want to go yeah. any farther than this. Eli Lake and Josh Rogan, they will have much more to say. Follow the column very carefully. A conference call, meeting of the board of Al-Qaeda Global. Mary Kissel, I'm John Batchelor.